Hi, Young. Good to see you both. Good to see you. Great. Well, you've been partnering over the last few decades, and I like to start this conversation by um, taking us to the current State of the Union uh, as it relates to early stage investing and particularly in deep tech, and really dig into why now is the right time to start uh, Weldon Catalyst. Uh, so Litbu, you, you've been an investor for over three decades. What's unique about today? Uh, this is a very exciting time to invest in deep tech, and a couple of couple of key points. One is uh, there's a five generation waves happening at the same time. And uh, then you have uh, the five generation wave include you know, AI machine learning, industrial 4.0, and autonomous driving, and the cloud, and, uh, and our, the AI machine learning. So I think it's a really exciting time. And uh, meanwhile, there's about the data-centric era. It's all about data. And uh, you heard about the cloud. And right now we call about the continue, cloud continuum. And uh, also the purpose built uh, to, to address some of the different workload of the requirement. And then, so I think AI machine learning is changing the game. And uh, basically using AI machine learning, you have multiple vertical is really taking off. Like the medical, biotech, drug discovery is one of them, FinTech and crypto platform. And all this is uh, a lot of innovation, a lot of unicorns to be made. And this is an exciting time. Young and I, we share the same vision uh, to invest in the deep tech. And uh, not many deep tech players that have the operating the background that both of us have and the network we have to make it to scale. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And Young, you've been a C CEO of many companies. Uh, you've been a venture capitalist and an entrepreneur, so I think you have a really unique view on this topic. Um, the, the current environment is different from what it used to be. Mm -hmm. and what do you see as uniquely um, advantageous? I think we're in a very interesting time where things are changing in such a rapid way. It's cre creating a new opportunity for many entrepreneurs that are in front of us. One of them, obviously, what Lipu mentioned, the cloud is enabling all of our opportunities to run things from any distance. Obviously, I call this four Cs. First is, of course, the, um, the coronavirus, the C that we didn't expect. But what it did was, I think, made an enabler most, most of our business that can be done through the cloud. And then, obviously, the other one is the consumer. Uh, being able to provide tools that can be able to make your job effectively no matter where we are, and being able to do or precision medicine type of opportunities using new technologies are also very exciting. And consumer experience will be such an important part of what we develop going forward. All those cloud and consumer experience wouldn't be possible without chips. And you may think that um, even vaccine wouldn't be able to develop without chips. Why is that? Without having a great gene sequencing technology, being able to isolate through mRNA, being able to replicate that clones, and then being able to see how it interacts with our human body is all part of a journey where technology is enabling the new reality that we are living in. Well, it's good that you brought up chips because as two captains of the semiconductor industry, uh, you're intimately familiar with the environment. I got to ask you the hot question of the day. What's going on with the semiconductor shortage and how is that shaping the business environment? I can start first. I yes, think, first please. of all, mm -hmm. I think clearly and uh, the demand is so strong, like I mentioned earlier, is a data-centric era and also the five generation waves. So the demand is really strong and then the problem right now we have is a lot of components in manufacturing in Asia, and they, some of this because of pandemic, uh, they shut down the factory, and then some of this component is not the most advanced uh, notes uh, component. It's kind of more the latent notes. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it feature-rich notes, and uh, basically they are all in big shortage. And then the other part is this logistic is a big problem, you know, from the container shipping the union worker, the truck driver, and that compound the problem. And as you know, building a fab, it takes about three, four years. And uh, so it's not like over time you can kind of turn the key, the factory will be running. And some of the equipment, you take about six to nine months to install. And so long story short, I think we're going to go through some challenges. I think right now a lot of customers 
big you know, automotive CEO called me up, said, Lippo, how, I want to know more about the supply chain. How can we build longer term relationship? So this is a great time for us to be an investor, to help some of our portfolio, to connect with some of these leading customer, and that's truly value that we can provide together. Indeed, and Yang, your view on this? Yeah, just a great example of the typical automobile requires 1,300 semiconductor components. And as you know, if you just miss one part, you cannot build a car. Mm -hmm. So the reality is that uh, we are so used to just-in-time delivery, and then when pandemic hit, we all had different decisions to make. Where we invest, when we shut down, how we travel, and all those changes create a signal mismatch. So we're not having this precise signal that we used to have and to be able to deliver supply chain. I think for entrepreneurs, there's a huge opportunity to figure out how to manage supply chain much secure, much in time, with a much greater visibility. So I see that as an opportunity, but it is a current challenge. And it does take a lot of money, planning, for semiconductor industry or any really deep tech related areas it requires a vision, it takes planning, and I think it's going to take time. But it is an opportunity for us to change. It's, it's a great opportunity for people like us that are in looking at how we can fix the problems. Yeah, well said. And thank you for painting the overall picture of the world today, as I think it really gives us context. Um, for, for what we're talking about next. So zero in and talking specifically about Walden Catalyst, how is the firm positioned to capitalize on this massive data economy? Uh, Young, do you want to start? Sure. I think that uh, opportunity for data uh, is there. And I want to show one slide here. Uh, if you look at, and Lippen and I have been talking about this, the data is doubling every, almost every two years. And it's structured data. So unstructured data. But when you put it all together, we have to figure out what that means. And our ability to analyze data is about 2% of those data is being analyzed. There's so much information that we can help us to learn and improve our applications. We believe that it is an explosion of data that are creating incredible opportunities. And I think the reason we believe there's also a possibility we can be able to take this advantage of data is because compute, the modern compute is much, much more powerful than it used to be. And I think it's to do with what traditional Morse law that are creating the processors. And then on the top of that, we have accelerators. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we now have the data bricks that can be able to help you with AI. And then, of course, the advancement in AI that can give you the, the what I call accelerated learnings, as well as the uh, supervised and unsupervised ability to transform and making meaning out of a lot of this tons of data. So I think that's a really exciting part of the era that we're in. And we call it this golden age of modern compute with a million times potential. And Lipu and I have been talking a lot about this area. And I think maybe, maybe Mipu, you can talk about why you think it's a great time for this million times of potential in this time frame. Yeah, I think this is an exciting time. I think, as you mentioned earlier, is a very data-centric era. Compute, the performance, the scaling is tremendous. And so there's a lot of new technique in terms of like chiplets, mm -hmm. how to scale it, and how to drive the power down because the most law is slowing down. And some new material need to be required. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a very opportune time for innovation and investment in the deep tech and then how to scale. And then the other part I think you talk about is software 2.0. Mm -hmm. In the past, is you build the hardware, and then, and then you try to figure out the software to make it work. Yeah. And now it's the other way around. That software define mm -hmm. the purpose. Then you build the silicon, build the system mm -hmm. to supply that. And this is a sea change happening right now. Right. This is just incredible time. I, I think Lippen and I have been in industry for over 30 years. And I think great opportunity doesn't come every year, but it does come every certain waves. And we believe it is the era of the uh, uh, data wave. And the new compete, new architecture is required to take advantage of this wave. And we call it this million exponential opportunities. Uh, one are driven by the, what Lipu discussed earlier about new materials, new architecture that are really the fundamental to enabling it. 
and then of course the software stacks and the AI and software 2.0 that can be able to generate new machine code that can be able to accelerate that. Let's go down a couple of slides here. So first of all, we also believe there is a whole new opportunity for new hardware architecture. And as you know, uh, I started my career in Silicon Valley working for Intel. Mm -hmm. So I'm a classic microprocessor person, and that has dominated the last 30 years. And then over the years, I moved out of Intel, joined ARM, and ARM became the new architecture. Mm -hmm. So every mobile phone, every device you use are based on ARM. Now question is, what's next? And I think this is the topic that Lipu and I have been discussing. Lipu, what's next? Yeah, I think this is an exciting time. The instruction set is uh, kind of uh, given, but now how do you build purpose-built uh, uh, architecture mm -hmm. uh, based on the different workload, and then how do you optimize it, and also drive the power down and efficiency for that. So I think that's a new era coming up. And then open source, you want to embrace the open source. So I think the risk five starting to take off, uh, adoption is accelerating. Mm -hmm. So I think this is an like, exciting time. Right. So you're gonna hear uh, later on one of the company that are based on RISC-V architecture to do really what I call the next generation architecture we believe that are coming. And uh, it is one of the things we get really excited about. The other thing I think we're really excited about is the, uh, the way the data is managed today and where it's going. So if you look at in the past, old data stack was really around your Typically, your applications, whether it's the customers, whether it's your product, or your employees. And there is a particular dedicated application servers that are serving each of those apps. So it could be Workday, it could be SAP, or even Cadence Tools that are enabling to run your applications. And that has some advantages because it gives you the performance you need for typical applications. Well, when the data is going to cloud, like you see from here, data warehouse is now being able to meet all your data in one place, whether it's customer data, product data, employee data, and then you're transforming the way the modern data stack is going to evolve, and that's where we are today, and we are very excited that we can be able to address using the open compute architecture to exchange this data so that the data you have can be able to run it regardless of which hardware, regardless of which uh, framework you're using to run it. And I think that is the future of where new data stack is going. And it's, it is an exciting part, it's the exciting part of the journey. And another company will be talking about this this That's afternoon right. uh, regarding the journey in this particular area. So you'll be stay tuned for that discussion. Um, the evolution of semiconductor has been really interesting. And I want to ask Lipu to talk about how Cadence or other EDA companies enable what is possible today in silicon? Yeah, before I address that, maybe go to the previous slide. Mm -hmm. And then basically, I think the, I call it the cloud continuum. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a cloud, and there's about 16 billion devices going to be created mm -hmm. and, uh, for the edge. Mm -hmm. And then, in fact, the future of the cloud is the edge. Right. So how do you provide the data continually into the cloud and then to the on-premise. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge, that means that you want to decide the data in the distributed way. Mm -hmm. And so you need to have a unified platform that able to address the data from the edge mm -hmm. to the cloud and based on what the optimization that you want to drive. Right. And so rather than each silo that you described earlier. Mm -hmm. So I think the next company that we really going to highlight later on is the Voltron that provide that unified platform on the data mm -hmm. that able to move the data as you go and then so that will not be stuck in the different silo. Mm -hmm. And of course you have to address the security, you have to address the, the data movement mm -hmm. uh, in a very optimized way. So this is exciting. Very exciting. Uh, we're really excited about the possibility of the moving. The data you have is not stuck in one location, but the data you have has a continuum of opportunities. And, and in, I think in some way, I, second question that you asked about Cadence. Yes. So I think the part of Cadence is you know, as we move into from EDA, to we call it the intelligent system design. Mm -hmm. So in the way using our computational software expertise, how to drive all the way to the silicon, 
to the system level to the service provider mm -hmm. and how to optimize that. And there's a new field to open up from all the IP blocks that you want to assembly and then really drive the using AI machine learning to drive really like self self-driving car. Right. You drive the design automatically mm -hmm. and that is tremendous value in terms of time saving right. and efficiency. And that's one example, how do you use the data mm -hmm. to your own advantage to scale it distributedly? Yeah. You know, I don't know that you know um, that today without this complex semiconductors, the world cannot run. And I remember the early days of the semiconductor days where you have to actually lay out the chips one by one, testing one by one. Today, now we can create 100 billion transistors based density based on semiconductors that are all done by tools, simulations, validation, verification, and then when the con chips comes out, it works mm -hmm. in one, one scoop. So that would not be possible without the uh, evolution of the tools and the uh, technology that come out of the EVA industry. Like that, I think there is a huge opportunity that we learned from semiconductor in IT industry can apply to other industry as well. The intersection of biology that Franz Ho talked about with IT is really happening in front of us, mainly because now we believe we can be able to model the high complex proteins, or like RNA and DNA sequencing we have done. All that information can give us so much more insight around how we can simulate, like Smith Cadence has done, now we can model it, we can simulate it, we can test it, so, and then we can be able to automate it. And that whole process will accelerate drug discovery, better diagnostics, which in turn it should be able to make a much better impact on our health. And we believe this combination of the multidisciplinary opportunities between biology and technology is a very exciting area. Do you want to add any comments? No, I think you highlight very well. I think this whole medical using the data mm -hmm. to more accurately addressing the patient specific uh, in our medicines mm -hmm. and using the accurate uh, biomarker mm -hmm. to help us to really optimize and know the data well enough and then have all the clinical data mm -hmm. to look at all the side effects and when the drug discovery can be more effective mm -hmm. and more productive. Yeah. So this is exciting for you. Yeah, and together, actually, thanks to you, Lipu, you introduced me to uh, Berkeley Life, yes. that uh, Dr. Ming's project out of Berkeley, uh, which in turn enabling to automate cellular isolation and automate to, to produce the good cells so that exactly what you're describing, we can be able to improve personal medicine yes. as an example of that, right? There's much, so much more opportunities that are coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that uh, one of the things we really get excited about going forward is really around this idea of the hundred, ten thousands or millions of opportunities that have really changed the way we can analyze data. Traditionally, we were bound by more slow. Now I think going forward, we are really not bound by anything other than our ability to transform these unsupervised trainers with a very small amount of data they can give you much insights. And I'm really excited that we are involved in this journey. Uh, we invest in a company called AI21, which where you're going to hear from Dr. Yoab regarding his view of the, what it means going forward. And really it's about giving human intelligence into the data that you have. And the question is how we do that. And this set of parameters that are going into understanding your natural language processing is bigger than you can imagine. 175 billion parameters that can enable you to be able to learn about the way we write, the way we read, and then when you can be able to use, I'm already using actually their applications called uh, Word uh, tools that are helping me to write better than actually I normally would be, depend on <laughs> what context. And that's just incredible to me because I speak English second language. And ability also read the New York Times articles and give you a synopsis of what's mm -hmm. going on. Imagine having one of those things when you're going MIT. Yes. That would have been very useful to showcase some of our homeworks. We can finish our graduate yeah, degree <laughs> faster. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and do I some other stuff. I think it's very clear that um, you both have a very specific uh, and unique thesis in this area. 
Um, so, and, and the way you paint about the future um, that we can all have and are currently progressing when we can harness the power of one million X computing power is, is very exciting. So any other uh, last words? Uh, I think I have one slide that I think maybe I can power praise. You know, people have been saying the software is eating the world, right? Just came out of this neighborhood. I am not going to say who. But we believe now AI is eating software. And this is software 2.0. And we believe in it. And this is our core thesis mm -hmm. of investment. Agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Labu. Thank you, Young, for this wonderful conversation. And certainly, we have very exciting prospects to look forward to.